Mr. Millennial. What in the world? You're welcome. Did you get us into this morning? A really good job, DP. That is to be determined. Hey, I'm the one who said very specifically, this is going to be an interesting one. And it's just payback for all the times you give me crap. Here we are. <laughs> so, in full disclosure, we just finished up the other big pad job down there. We had another big driveway job we were supposed to go do. That guy, for some reason, backed out. He's, he's not ready. He needs us to come in the spring. It's not that he backed out. He's just not ready. It happens. Sometimes you got to put some fillers in there. <laughs> so, this guy here won the dirt perfect lottery because he's just up the road from where we're working and he had a couple day job that we could jump in here and get filled in on so hey, he did go by a mega million since we were able to squeeze him in before may of 2023 <laughs> i'm serious so yeah so ding 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 we got a dirt perfect lottery winner for the such thing but let me tell you we are fixing to find out real quick if we can use the big 210 on a really small job, because here we are, folks. It's not really small, but it is small. <laughs> it's a little tight. So, here's what, uh, here's what we got going. Hey guys, real quick before we get into today's video, the Utility Expo is less than a year away and I cannot wait. This will be my third time attending the event and if you guys haven't checked it out, you are missing out for sure. Trust me, you're going to want to sign up for Utility Expo show alerts and you can do that by checking out the link in this video's description. That way you'll be the first one to know when registration goes live and get all the latest and greatest updates of what's going on at the show. So uh, head down below to the description, check it out, click on the link, get registered for show alerts, and hopefully with a little bit of luck, we'll see you guys at the show. All right, so let me do, let, let me do my best to kind of explain what is going on here. So the ultimate goal is to get a 32 by 30 pole barn in this area here. So remove a few trees, swoosh a little dirt around, all good, right? Not quite that simple on this one. So first off, removing the trees right off the bat is gonna be a little bit of a challenge. We got high voltage power lines, fiber optic, a nice little cabin over here. And uh, yeah, we don't wanna be filing an insurance claim this morning. Keep that in mind, Mr. Millennial. Once we get all of that figured out, We've got a six inch water main that goes right down through here. The water company here is absolutely awesome. Uh, they actually came up here yesterday and we spot dug this thing to do a true location on it. This line was installed in the 60s. So there's no tracer wire on it. There's some random maps off some generic references, but nothing's for sure, right? But, uh, well, our holes filled in a little bit, but we got a location on that. Why is that important? The water company wants us to stay two feet off of it. And then we gotta do a two fit retaining wall. And then we wanna make, hit a certain spot down there. So we are gonna be extremely, extremely cramped that was so for space. Detailed. Hit so, a certain spot down there. There's a white stake. <laughs> I hate to tell everybody involved, but I don't think the, I'm glad the white stake's mobile because. It's definitely mobile. I don't think we're gonna hit the white stake. No. Nope. Unless he wants to relocate a water line. Absolutely not. This feeds the entire city. <laughs> <laughs> That's not happening. And uh, this would be a prime, prime candidate for the old 120. But uh, with wait this... a minute, who said that? But the 120 is already heading to another job, and this one here is passing through. Hey, I said this when I bought that machine. If we're gonna get a bigger machine. We're gonna have to figure out how to do small jobs with it. Oh, well, definitely gonna have to. Figure well, it out. here we are. <laughs> This, this is the extreme. I think I even mentioned that. We don't need it, Mike, but we got to figure it out, Matt. I know we don't need it, but it's what we got. So, what's first? We got to knock some trees over? Kind of have to. All right. The uh, There is a few trees in there that may... Um, I'm going out on a limb here. You get it, tree? Going out. Yeah. Oh, you so funny. May make a saw log. The neighbor over here has actually got a small little saw mill. He may grab them or not. So we're going to save what we can. The rest of it's going in a pile. Let's do it. All right, I'm not going to lie, guys. I definitely kind of feel like a bull in a china shop with this big old machine. This little video spot here. It's got a fiber optic line. I can barely get underneath it. 
all the way folded up. So let's see if we can get us a little bit of working room here. Opened up. Got to make sure nothing goes back over my head because we're going to be in trouble. Oh, easy now. I get asked a lot doing this clearing work if I get worried about that drain control electronics on the boom up there, especially if we're having fires and stuff. And honestly, in the beginning, it was a pretty major concern, but kind of the way it's tucked away up there, a little more protected than what you would think it would be. It's definitely probably still one of the more fragile things on the boom, but it don't have near the concern I used to. Nice having the extra power though. Come on. After running uh, Brandon from Dirt Grain and Steel, running that 220, he's got a little bit. I am, uh, I'm pretty pleased with my 210. It's, the biggest difference I can tell after running them back to back is that machine is maybe. You can tell it's got a little more weight to it. It's possibly slightly better balanced as far as the overall performance and uh, digging capacity and power. They are very, very, very similar. Very similar. Careful with Might get lucky. Definitely got a little bit more room to work now. We got a few trees cleared out. This here, at least a little wide oak here. There's a maple behind it that we're gonna keep. I'd like to miss that maple. I don't wanna knock a bunch of limbs out of it. It might come at this at a little bit of a different angle. Guys, even see up there.
All right, got a couple of those tricky trees now. Got a little bit of room opened up here. We have discovered a new obstacle. We got a very angry nest of ground hornets over here, so that's gonna be nice. I'm gonna try to. What I say about the 210, got a little extra reach, and we can stay a little farther away from them when we make them good and bad. I'm trying to dig their nest out there. Them guys get pretty deep in the ground sometimes. Matt went to grab the radios. We forgot the radios this morning. We got so much stuff going on around here. I want to make sure we got the radio so we got some good communication. We start taking these trees here. You can either hit the power line, the house, or me. We don't want any of those three to happen. So that way to get the radios. While he's getting the radios, I'm going to take out a few of these smaller trees here. And then we'll get to tackle these last few bigger ones. are not happy with me at all. Well, let's go a little closer to the house that I like. Come around here now. To that stub, scratch the counterway, love in the track in it first. Woo. Can't be doing that. All right, got this area here opened up nice, got all the small stuff kind of thinned out of there so we can work and see what we got. We basically got three larger trees left one, two, three. <laughs> They're gonna get progressively harder to deal with as we go this one here should be pretty straightforward should be able to fall it right down there in the hole this one here is leaning back towards the power line a little bit but i should have enough room to get the machine behind it to get some good leverage on it shouldn't be too much of an issue but this guy right here he could not be in a more precarious situation at all he is leaning back towards the power line in the house i don't know can i get an angle on where you guys can see it he's leaning like towards us and this way power lines being up here obviously the house being there so i'm hoping once i get all this stuff cleaned out we can get ourselves wiggled down in here and get the machine positioned just right where we can take it that way he's a pretty small tree we got a very sizable machine obviously so hopefully it won't be too much of an issue if we can just get the right angle on it but let's get these last couple out of here then we'll get this all cleaned up and laid off hey are you gonna push that tree over today or what Yeah, I think I will. Well, make it happen, Captain. Oh, I'm not Captain. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think he caught my point there. Two tens digging. Well, not comfortable with it. I'll take a little more dirt out.
Come on, tree. Go easy on us. Go easy on us. Keep it going. All right, let's all say it together. Timber! Nice job. Oops. Mr. Millennial. Then there was one. <laughs> the I feel like this. One. I feel like this is the tree we should call. And make sure the insurance is paid up before we take it down. It's your insurance, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> I want to walk up here with the machine on this side, hook the tree, and pull it back towards myself because I feel like I got more control over it. Matt thinks I need to try to squeeze in between here and the guideline or guide wire. The problem, my personal opinion, is when you hook it, I know you've got your thumb, but if you do lose it, you have nothing to do because you either pull it on top of yourself, let it hit the power line or hit the cabin, whereas if you're here, you can just track the you-know-what out of it and just keep on trucking with it. Yeah, but if I hook it from up here and I track back this direction, I just swing it over and smash it down the woods right there and I've got my bucket around it at all times. If I still push it and it gets away from me, I don't know if I can chase it. I have to agree to disagree on this one. Well, none of it sounds good, honestly. Well, I mean, <laughs> option A, B, and C all suck. <laughs> I agree with that. I don't think I can get in there at the angle I need to get in there. Heck. The only thing you're going to demolish is rock sticks. You can come right through here just like you did. No, this is not the 120. Way. It may have right the same here. numbers. It may have the same numbers as the 120, but they're in a completely different order. It, it, makes, it makes a difference. No, you got plenty of room. There is no way I can get I in absolutely. here. Absolutely. So you know what? I no. just heard a challenge. Yeah. For yourself. There is no way. Yeah. I don't even have to. I just. I just know. We're going to my way. We're going <laughs> no. my way. Yep. Now we got to yep. prove it to the people. Even if you don't push it from here, you got to prove you can't fit. Because I think you can. Don't even deny the challenge. I'm not denying the fact that I could probably get wiggled in here. Oh yeah, see now you're changing that. What I'm denying is, is the angle. It's perfect. <sighs> the true only loss you have is to the fireworks show. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go more that way. Which is perfect. You're pushing it right against its lean and you're going that way. And you've got gravity in your favor. The machine's going way more going downhill, right? You this is why, shake your head This at me. is why you're the cameraman. I'm the operator. <laughs> I don't care how you do it. I'm not for sure he's actually going to fall this tree from this side, but I at least got him talked into coming over here. Don't forget, there is a water line exposed down there. I'm just making sure I said it, because if I didn't and you hit it, why didn't you remind me? <laughs> Honestly, it's not that big of a tree. It's just in a really peculiar position with all the limitations.
There's a full circle for you guys of all the limitations. I know the sunlight was bright. Sorry about that. He's, he's in there pretty tight. But I still think he can get high enough for the stick in, boom up, bucket out. See? I think it's awesome. Now we just gotta hope the tree doesn't break. interview after the successful felling of the tree next to the cabin was i right or was i right you're wrong whatever so correct no i would have done it the other way no i wish i, I loved my 210 i would have been much more comfortable with the 120 doing that why just because i know i know what i got I'm still learning this thing but you now know what you got well i mean obviously i had plenty of machine to wrestle with the tree but yeah Oh, you've got plenty of machine here, bud. Yeah. <laughs> we still got that little over seven tree on there. Yeah, so that's the next interesting culprit. Should I top them or should I just go? I think the persimmon, your little hook conversation about the last tree would work pretty good. Oh, so now we're gonna hook. Only because you're so close to the cabin. <laughs> yeah, so the homeowner requested while we're here, can we get rid of this persimmon tree? Because it's loaded with persimmons, or was, and they fall on the roof, bust, and then all the juices run down to his gutter guard. You can see the sticky substance along the gutter there. So this one was a please take this one while you're here type of thing. Oh boy, here we go. He's just going for it. <laughs> so after further review we've made a executive decision the persimmon tree top it, it's pretty far up there comparable to the shag bark here we're also going to remove these two trees so we're going to take those out before we take the persimmon to ensure yeah that shag bark's tough one, to ensure that the persimmon top doesn't get stuck here and break off and kick back to the left
Hickory's being the biggest pain in the butt yet. DP you're batting a thousand so far don't miss Well, Mr. Millennial, we managed to get all the trees down without damaging any power lines or houses. Or equipment. Or equipment. Or each other. Or each we forget other. about us. We always so. do forget about us. <laughs> all right, I think the next thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and try to kind of get our mess cleaned up here and get us a blank slate. That way we can start pulling some measurements now we got all the trees out of the way and figure out how we're going to get this building to fit in here. It's going to fit. All right, it's going to fit. How's, how's the question? <laughs> All right, now we kind of got that smoothed off a little bit. We got a got a little bit of a better idea what we're dealing with here. Man, and I have been doing some measurements. You see the two white stakes down there. That's going to roughly represent the bottom edge of that building or that pad. Here's our limitations. We got the water line right there. 
we cannot excavate within two feet of it so that's this line right here and it's actually going to run away from the water line so this is the only area we're going to be kind of kind of close to it gotta be a little bit uh a little bit careful our ideal elevation is this gravel right here so i think what we're going to do is we're going to go up there on that parallel line which is parallel to the house the parallel bottom edge of the pad take the 210 dump pick that up out of there throw it down the hill roll it in and pack it down there there's definitely no need for a haul truck on this one well, let's just throw another big piece of equipment in the mix. Why not? <laughs> the 210 should make pretty quick work of this little project, <laughs> let me tell you. So, all right, let's get uh, get the excavator down here and see what we can do. This should take like all of 15 minutes. All right, Matt's got the laser set up down there on the grade we are shooting for. I know it's hard for you guys to see, but I do have a purple line there on the ground. I'll do my best to try to follow. Also, I'm gonna throw a little bit of this dirt back here behind me. And then we track back, it'll level us up just a bit. Once we get this dug out, since there's that water line right there, we uh, cannot obviously slope this bank back. So, tomorrow's project's gonna be coming in here with some stacking cubes to build a small little retaining wall. Let's see a little bit of moisture down there in that ground. That'll help us pack a little bit better. You just worry about that grade rod. I don't worry about this little digging thing. That's why I'm asking the question, because my grade rod ain't going to take the hill too. I'm not going to take any of that hill off until I establish a straight line. Somebody didn't set the laser high enough. Man, that's dry. Dry, I tell you. All right, got one small section to grade there. We're going to use what we have available to us. Let's go ahead and set grade. Bam. Look at that. We're good to go. According to my instrumentation, that's exactly a five foot cut. I'd say it's pretty accurate. Finish getting this out. We'll probably bust that around, get it packed in. I'm curious to see how well it packs with the lack of moisture in it. And we'll keep on going. All right, we got that kind of dug out a little bit. This dirt's so dry. It's gonna help a little bit. It's better than nothing. Matt's actually down there spraying water on it. I get a little moisture in it for compaction purposes here.
scrape it off again. All right, now I was able to get some pretty good moisture in this dirt right here. And it's gonna pack very, very, very nice. Just kind of getting it all rolled in. Have them kind of come down and, and compact that into this lower existing ground. It'll kind of help pin it together a little bit. I think it's gonna work out pretty good. It definitely needed that splash of moisture. That's for sure. As soon as it gets done rolling out in, we're gonna jump back up and we'll swing another, swing another round of dirt over. Basically putting there lifting. Yeah, you hear that down the ground? stand here ready to water your dirt and Mike just you know has to get himself perfectly level come again I'm talking to your people 10 4 we'll be back folks I'm just gonna water my dirt while DP's digging Hoping the dirt grows, so we'll have more. You think it's gonna grow since I'm watering it? <laughs> he doesn't think I'm funny. People think, what the heck are you doing? This dirt is so dry. That's an understatement. It's beyond dry. It doesn't pack very good when it's that dry. Just about to get her, and Mike will take the skid steer and knock her off, and then we'll pack it. Oh, maybe a little much water there. Right there, guys. Cannot complain about that at all. Showing up, getting all these trees out of here. 
the uh the 210 actually proved to be a little more useful in this tight little spot i was a little worried we were gonna have enough room to get around and do everything we needed to do but it actually worked out actually worked out quite well just kind of learned the tricks of how to get placed in here and do what we need to do so used to using the other size machines in this area but we're close uh tomorrow i think we're going to come in here and adjust the height of this pad about six to eight inches to ensure we got enough dirt and maintain drainage we actually had two courses of block uh spec for this wall we may jump up to three just make sure we get drainage around the back side of it that's going to be a wrap on up for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, give it a big old thumbs up. Well, make sure you don't miss out on how the rest of the project turns out. Consider subscribing. That way we can catch you on the next one. Later.